I call Eugenie Sage. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I'm pleased to take a short call on the Christchurch City Council Rates Validation Bill. And it will be short, given that it costs over $21,000 an hour for the running of Parliament and that there is wide support uh, across the House for this technical bill. Yes, it is retrospective, but I would agree with Mr Foster Bell that it is curative and tolerable while retrospective. And the Green Party is supporting this bill because the mistakes that the Christchurch City Council made in its rate-setting resolutions were not deliberate and they were simply in the wording of the resolutions. They didn't affect the amount of rates that Christchurch folk had to pay, nor the penalties which um, ratepayers were liable to pay for um, delayed or non-payment. And, Mr Speaker, I think we should be very careful in this House not to throw stones. It is a wooden house rather than a glass house. But we will be debating legislation tomorrow which corrects um, a mistake made in the uh, exclusive economic zone legislation. So this Parliament often has to reconsider legislation which was not um, fully considered in select committee and in the House debates. So it is not um, unknown for errors to be made. And the mistakes that the Christchurch City Council made in its resolutions were in relation to the payment dates for rates and the authority to impose penalties on unpaid rates. And that raised issues with the uh, validity of collecting the rates and the penalties uh, for non-payment. So the bill uh, validates the payment dates and it validates any penalties which have been added to the rates. And it ensures that all the money that the Council has received in respect of the rates are to be lawful and always to have been lawful. Um, as Mr Foster Bell noted, uh, it relates to some of the uniform annual charges, some of the targeted rates and loans for Church Bay, Governors Bay for wastewater and water supply uh, schemes. And one of the issues with this bill didn't go through is that there is a $683,000 hole in the Council's revenue stream. If the bill uh, wasn't passed, then the Council would be A, liable to legal challenge, and it wouldn't be able to chase up the 38 ratepayers who haven't paid their rates and are liable for penalties without the risk of uh, a legal challenge. So that would... Um, impose quite significant extra costs on a council which has already got uh, funding problems. So we have no um, substantive issue in supporting the bill because the mistakes weren't deliberate, they were procedural and they um, yeah, we're, we're, we're uh, resolving an issue that uh, should be resolved and the council has brought to public and parliament's attention at the first opportunity when those mistakes were discovered. But while, Mr Speaker, the Council has been able to come to Parliament to get those issues resolved, it won't be able to come to Parliament as easily if it uh, proceeds with its very short-sighted decision to sell off major Council assets uh, like the Port Company, the Airport and Orion, which have been a major contributor through the dividends that those uh, companies provide to keeping the Council's rates low. Um, the $43 million in dividends which are coming to the Council in the 2015-16 year mean that rates are 13 per cent lower than they would otherwise be. So the Green Party considers it incredibly short-sighted to be pushed as the City Council is being by the National Government's failure to renegotiate the cost-sharing agreement, its failure to meet the $400 million shortfall in the costs of repairing the horizontal infrastructure um, to consider selling these revenue, generation, revenue generating assets in order to fund um, a potential white element, elephant like the stadium, which is likely to lose revenue. So we support the bill, but we oppose the proposals in the City Council's long-term plan to sell vital revenue generating assets. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Spoken by the